How y'all doing this morning? Good? All right. Let me move more in the center. I don't want to neglect this side of the room. I would hate to neglect this side of the room. Who thinks they know a lot about the Bible? I heard a lot of no's. Who likes? Serena Gilliland does. That's what I was told. I know she does. I've known her for a long time. Who, uh, who likes candy? Alright. We'll do Bible trivia real quick. But here's the rules. You can't speak the entire time unless you're called on. If you do, then you're automatically disqualified. Shh. Ready? We'll do a couple of them real quick, alright? What was the name of the shepherd boy who became the second king in Israel? That is correct. That is correct. Logan. Boy. Alright, here we go. Ready? We'll do another one. How many brothers did Joseph have? No. That's correct. Alright. How about... Who were the parents of Cain and Abel? Nolan. That was real smooth. No, no, no. Right here. That's correct. Adam and Eve. I should probably carry these. I'm a really bad thrower. I didn't play football. Don't forgive me. Who did Boaz marry? Oh, you already did one. You already did one. Sarah. Ruth. There it is. All right. One more. And then if we have time at the end, maybe some more. Uh, who is Moses' brother? That's correct. All right. All right, shh. Who can tell me what we talked about last week? Last week. Serena? <laughs> what did you say? I couldn't hear you. You're like, we talked about this guy. Yeah, yeah, what, what else did we talk about? Getting what? Lost in the car, yeah. Uh, I got lost this week, so I've been away from Williamsburg for a while, and there were a couple of times I turned down some roads that I thought was where I was supposed to be going. It wasn't, so it was like that story all over again, except I should know this area. I've lived here my whole life. It is very sad. Um, since last week, though, on a, on a better note, I, I have eaten a lot of great food. I've had Sal's, a New York Deli, a Plaza Azteca. Oh. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. I love Williamsburg food. Turn to your Bibles, if you will. Do you have your Bibles? I do. No. No one brought a Bible? Wait, I do. Who I has a Bible? Like an actual Bible. Sarah Lemway, is that a real Bible or is that a Kindle? Oh my goodness. Oh my, I have a real Bible, so I'll give myself a piece of candy. All right, Mark chapter 5. I will read it to you if... Someone can hit a light somewhere, because I have bad vision, and I can't see my Bible right now. There we go. Mark chapter 5, Jesus is here, and a bunch of people have gathered, and a guy came and he said, please come help my daughter, and Jesus is like, okay, and he's walking along, and it said, a large crowd followed and pressed against him. A woman who was there, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all that she had, and yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd, crawled up behind him, and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. And once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out from him, and he turned around and asked the crowd, who has touched my clothes? You see, the crowd, uh, 
you see the people who are crowding and pressing against you, his disciples answered. And yet again you ask, and yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus looked around to see who had done it, and then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling in fear, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you that your faith has healed you. Go in peace, and you will be freed for, and you are and be freed from your suffering. Let's pray. God, I just thank you this morning. God, I just thank you that we are here. God, that we can come and we can learn about your word and, and, and in a free place, uh, free from oppression and free from persecution. And God, I just pray over the next few minutes that um, you would speak to my heart and speak to the hearts of these students about ways that um, we can look to your son for hope. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so in high school, I had this really bad syndrome. Middle, actually, middle school and high school. Actually, I started in elementary school. So, like, my whole life, my whole life, I had this really bad habit. And what I would do is, whenever I needed to remember something, I would write it on my hand. And so, like, so like this was the original Palm Pilot for me. Like, I didn't have a Palm Pilot, but, like, like, you even know what a Palm Pilot is? It was, I it was like what we I had do. before smartphones. There were these things, and, you, and it did everything like a smartphone could do except make phone calls. And so I didn't have one of those either. I was I grew up, we didn't have a whole lot of money. And so my Palm Pilot was, I would just sit here and write homework. If I had homework, I wrote it on my hand. If I had, um, if you remember to pick something up at the store, I wrote it on my hand. Everything went on my hand. So by the end of the day, like, the top side of my hand, the back side of my hand, up my arms sometimes. And my dad hated it. Like, when I came home from school, he would yell at me about writing on my hand. Well, I told you about writing on your hand! Every day. Every day. And every day I had to do it. Because if I, like, wrote it in my planner, do y'all have planners still? Like, I wouldn't, I didn't look at my planner. Like, if you went to my planner at the end of the year, there were, like, three pages. Like, Day one of school, day two of school, day three of school had stuff in it, and then I was like, no way, this isn't working, I'm not checking it, and I keep forgetting to do my homework in three days. So, I wrote it on my hand. The problem with that was, occasionally, something that I really, really wanted to have, or really, really needed to remember would get written on my hand, and then I'd like go to the bathroom and wash my hands, and it would like start to rub off. And this was especially, especially, and I know you all are like sixth, seventh grade, so you probably don't understand, but when you when you continue to do this and you build this habit, you like reach high school and you start to like people, like they'll write their number on your hand. So this really cute girl wrote her number on my hand. The problem was that like I had gym class that day, and like my hand got really sweaty from playing basketball, because she wrote it on my right hand and I'm right-handed, and the number started to rub off. And so by the time I got home, like I could read like the first like four numbers and then the last four were like completely, I had no idea. Like I could see the outline of what maybe was an eight, but it could have been a zero. Like I had absolutely no idea. And so what I had to do was I had to get my phone or my house phone, not a cell phone. I didn't have a cell phone at this point. Well, I did have a cell phone at this point, but I was using house phone because we didn't have unlimited minutes like we had now, so you couldn't use your cell phone to call people, really, especially if you're at home, unless it was after 8 o'clock. After 8 o'clock, you had unlimited minutes. I know. This is like foreign language because y'all have, have a name now. Jeez. But, so I'm calling all these numbers. So I'm like, all right, eight seven six five nine three two five zero nine nine. I tried all these different combinations, and then the weirdest people pick up the phone when you do this. Like, this one guy has a phone, he's like, hello. I was like, is, is, is this Sarah? No, this is Bubba. <laughs> do you know Sarah? No, I don't know anybody named Sarah. <laughs> Click, I hung up immediately. I was like, oh crap, I don't want this guy to figure out who I am. <laughs> so I tried again, and then like this, this really like this, this lady, this really old lady, picked up the phone, and I'm like, "Do you know Sarah?" And she's like, "I don't know anybody named Sarah." All these people picked up the phone. So then I was like, "Well, I have a friend who knows her, and I, I she gave me her number, so it won't be that weird for me." To, so I, I, I picked up my cell phone and I flipped it open because we had flip phones back then, and I'm clicking. You, you couldn't like skip down either, so you gotta like click through everybody in your phone, and they get to T. For my friend Tara, you have to go through S for Sarah. And when I got to SA, lo and behold, I was actually smart for once and had programmed her number into my phone. 
I had it the whole time. I had it the whole time. And I called all these people, all the wrong numbers, and all along my phone had the answer. And I kind of, I kind of feel like the lady in this story kind of exemplifies sort of the same thing. Like she's been sick for 12 years, so she's been bleeding. The Bible says that she had an issue where she kind of bled a lot. And so she's sick and she kind of she kind of has this disease. And so for 12 years, she's been an outcast. Um, they would have found her because she's sick. She would have been like ceremonially, like officially, like stamped on her birth certificate, on her driver's license. It's like unclean is written on there, right? And also socially, so like people wouldn't have wanted her around them. Like, like how, how some of you, like there's a kid that you don't really like and you don't want him in your social group. This was everyone in the country did not want this lady around her because she was considered unclean. She was considered unclean. They, she wouldn't have been welcomed, especially in this group where the Messiah was, right? Because they wouldn't have wanted Jesus, their Messiah, the person who they were all excited about, who was doing all these amazing things, they wouldn't have wanted him to catch whatever she had. And she tried all of these different solutions. So she, it says that she spent all the money she had on doctors. So she's gone from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, looking for an answer to her problem, looking for someone to heal her. And if she's done doctors, if she's done doctors, she's probably done like pagan rituals, she's like sacrificed an animal, like these are all like, these are all, like Old Testament solutions to problems. Uh, she, I can imagine like she's been to the herbologist, like if you're a Harry Potter fan and you remember like they do all the herbs and stuff, I'm sure they've tried something similar to that. Like they, they've done everything, they've done anything and nothing has been able to heal her though. Nothing works, similar to kind of how like I tried all these different numbers and nothing led me to Sarah, unfortunately. Would have loved for it to. Last year, I was, I was uh, a lot of you know that I kind of work on in theater and I do like lighting for concerts or, 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 or theater productions. Right now I'm here because I'm over at Crosswalk working on the Living Passover production. And last year I was working on a production and I've been working really long hours, like 16, 17, 18 hour days. Uh, there was one time I went like three days without sleeping. I worked for like three days straight. Took little naps here or there, but no like substantial, like eight o'clock at night I'm in bed. Like y'all have bedtimes, this was not me. And uh, I was starting to get a little confused because there's like all these different lights and all these different channel plug numbers and wires going everywhere. And, and I had been writing stuff down, but I had kind of paper scattered, like you're doing a project and you got like, you write something over here and you write something over here and you're trying to put it all together and you got all these different documents and stuff. That's kind of what I had going on, except I had them spread out across the floor of the stage and like, I just, there, there was stuff everywhere. And um, it was like four o'clock in the morning. I've been working for like three days and I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to get this one light on. Like there is one light bulb up there and I could not figure out where it is plugged into. I have tried everything. I am plugging stuff, I'm changing stuff, I'm pushing buttons, nothing is making this light come on. And, I'm, and, and, and like, I can like select everything and it'll come on. Like I can say everything in the building, like turn on and the light will come on, but then I can't single it out. I can't get the one, the one light that I'm looking for, like will not come on. It hates me, it, the light hates me. And then I realized that like, Right to my right, there's this little black book. I, I always have a little booklet where I've written a bunch of stuff down. I was like, all right, fine. So I opened the little book, and on the first page, right there in the center, it says, Jesus Light 32. So I go over to the little board, and I say 32, and I push the little thing up, and lo and behold, the light comes on. The only, like the only number I never tried. I thought it was something else and my little book had the answer. And so this lady, this lady that, that's in this story, she's trying, I feel like she's trying all these different numbers. Like she's trying all these different channels, she's trying all these different plugs. And eventually she comes to realize, Jesus. She comes to realize Jesus might just be the answer. Now. It probably what didn't happen just like that though. It probably wasn't Jesus. 
Like, like I don't think I don't think that's how it happened because at this point, like she has tried everything. She is desperate. She's desperate. I don't know if you've ever been in a desperate circumstance where like things are happening and you're really desperate for something to happen and there's desperation in your voice. Hey, just make sure you pay attention. Or like something is, when you want something so bad, like I can remember, I can remember two years ago. Two years ago, my grandfather uh, was incredibly sick. He uh, was dropping his computer off at Best Buy and um, he, he, was, he was older, so he had one of those uh, electric scooters. And he had to go to the bathroom, and, uh, and he was trying to get the, the, the bathroom at Best Buy. There was a lip on the bathroom door. And he was trying to get his scooter over that lip, because he didn't want to leave his scooter outside, because there were a lot of kids running around there at Best Buy. And so he wanted to take it in to make sure that no kid took off with it or anything. And um, as he's trying to get it over the door, he hits the throttle to give it a little bit of gas and the thing kind of went really fast and he fell backwards. And um, that normally would be okay for most, most older people. They'd get some bruises and, and get up. But my grandfather um, was on a drug called Coumadin. And Coumadin thins your blood really, really thin because he had problems with, with clotting and things like that. And so his blood was really thin. And so he had to go to the hospital, and his whole back and side, like everything turned black and blue because he, he was having issues with, with his blood, and they had to give him stuff to, to kind of help that. And um, they also put him on morphine, which morphine is a drug that, that, that helps with a lot of pain. If you're in a lot of pain, they give you morphine. And so um, he's on this, these, these drugs and stuff, and he's getting better, and they're, they're ready to send him home. He's ready to go home. They said, you know, we just need to, they just needed a monitor for some time and things were going really good. And um, my grandmother left and went to work. And she said, I'll be back at four o'clock. They're going to discharge you. You're going to go home. And so um, at four, she left work. At three o'clock, she called and said, hey, I'm leaving work. I got off a little early. I'm on my way. From three o'clock until 3.30, within that time, a nurse was able to mess up the order to wean him off of morphine and reverse the numbers and jacked him up on morphine. And when you're jacked up on morphine, everything in your body kind of crashes. You're, you, stop, you can stop breathing, it's like a sedative. So you can stop breathing, your heart can stop. And my grandfather did what they call crash. His heart, he stopped breathing, his heart stopped. And they had to start doing CPR, and they were able to reverse the effects of the morphine within about 20 minutes. For 20 minutes, they're doing CPR on my grandfather, trying to keep him alive long enough to reverse the effects of someone's mistake. And for the next two weeks, I lived at the hospital. We'd go to the hospital for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours in Hampton. And I can remember being in such a desperate situation at that point, where I'm literally on my knees, knees going, God, please help my grandfather. He doesn't deserve this. He doesn't deserve what he's going through. And I was in a de such a desperate situation. But that was towards the end of the week. That was towards the end of week too. I was in de such a desperate situation at first though, that I called a friend who was a doctor and said, can you look at my grandfather's case? And so they came to the hospital and they looked at it. They, I, I, I was so desperate, I was talking to all of his doctors saying, is there anything that we can do? I'm a little, I have a little bit of medical training. I've been in, you know, I worked as an EMT. I knew a little bit. And so I'm looking at my, all of the symptoms and I'm looking at all of my grandfather's vital signs and everything going, he's improving, he's improving, he's improving, but things aren't getting better. He's improving on paper a little bit, but he's not waking up. And so finally, by the end of week two, I'm in such a desperate situation. Finally, I'm like, Jesus. But it was two weeks before I got there. It was two weeks. And for this lady, it's been a long time coming. Jesus had kind of been on the scene for a while here. And finally, she's like, what do I got to lose? What do I got to lose? And some of you this morning, man, some of you are going through a lot. 
This woman is, is instantly healed. And, and if you're taking notes, which I always encourage everybody to take notes. So if you are taking notes, this is my point. My only point this morning is this, is that hope can be found in nothing in this world, but only in the person of Jesus Christ. Hope can be found in nothing in this world, but only in the person of Jesus Christ. So many times we try to, to be like this woman and place our hope in things like doctors and money, friends, parents, teachers. When in reality, the only thing that we should be looking at is the person of Jesus Christ. That's it. Some of you this morning are going through a lot in your life. You have parents or grandparents or uh, aunts, uncles, family members with cancer, friends. You're dealing with the loss of a family member or a friend, struggling with your grades maybe. Maybe your home life isn't so great. I've been there. Most, a lot of you know that from last year when I talked about it. You're being made fun of. Maybe your parents aren't getting along. There's sibling, sibling rivalry. And you've been looking for answers in all the wrong places. There's like a song about it, right? Looking for love. Oh, that's love. Never mind. But you've been looking for answers to these situations and things of this world. When in reality, the only place that you should be looking for your hope is in the person of Jesus Christ. And I'm here, I'm here this morning telling you this because I've been in your seat. I was in middle school and I was dealing with crap. I mean, there's no other word for it. I was dealing with stuffs. Stuffs, plural. I was dealing with stuff. And I wish that someone would have stood up in front of me and said, hey, stop looking at a doctor to heal your problem. Stop looking to money to solve your issue. Stop looking at your teacher and thinking that they're going to fix your grade. Stop looking at all these different things. Stop looking at everything in this world for your hope. The hope that you can get through it. The hope that someone's going to get healed. The hope for anything that you're going through. I wish someone would have stood in front of me and said, hey, stop looking for hope in this world. And look for hope in the person of Jesus Christ. The person who willingly, well not forcefully, willingly, came down the staircase from heaven and did amazing things while he was here. And then was betrayed for a mere 30 silver coins. And then was Accused of things. Went to mock trials. These trials happened in the middle of the night. His trial didn't even happen in the light of day because they knew that there was no way that they could convict him in a real court. And he was beaten and stood on a cross for us. So that when we are having family issues, we can look to him and say, please help me. So that when we're struggling in school with friends or with, with situations, we can look to him and say, please help me. It's not a thing where you gotta like corner him in a corner and say, hey, I need your undivided attention for just two minutes. Give me two minutes to tell you what's going on. Because if you, if, you, if, you, if you pay attention to this, right here, it says that the lady came up behind him, came up behind him, he didn't even see her. And all she did was, was touch the edge of his, of his robe. He didn't even have to make a concerted effort. He didn't have to see it. It says instantly she was healed and then he was like, who touched me? Who done that? Like, like, like he doesn't, Jesus loves us so much that he doesn't even have to think to answer. He didn't even have to think. It was in that instant. And this morning, some of y'all, man, and I know because I have these conversations with you. 
I have these conversations with some of you from time to time, and you tell me. And so you can sit here and pretend like, ah, he's not talking to me. Got by again this week. No, no, I'm talking right to you. Because every single one of us in this room, myself included, is going through something right now. Going through something right now. I was going through stuff when I walked up on stage this morning. I'm dealing with stuff right this second in my head. I'm like, oh, I gotta, uh, and, and the reality is I gotta stop thinking what I'm gonna do when I get off this stage and go somewhere else and say, boom, Jesus, is the only way that I'm gonna get through it. Because some of the stuff that I'm dealing with is terrible. I'm dealing with a lot. And so are you, every single one of you. Every single one of you. Some of you are in a dark place. You're hurting. They're all going through something. And the hope for your situation is only going to be found in the person of Jesus Christ. Bow your head and close your eyes with, from, with me for a minute. I want you to kind of think for a minute about what it is that you're kind of going through. Whether it's a parent or grandparent or, you know, whatever it is, grades, friends, whatever it is. And I want you to picture that in your head. And I want you to picture, like I am right now, all the things that you've tried to do to solve that issue. What you've been looking for. Man, I've, I have tried so much to try to solve the situations that I'm dealing with right now. Isaiah says in verse 40, I'm sorry, chapter 40, verse 31, he says, uh, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Man, Jesus loves each and every one of us so much. If you're here this morning and you say, Kyle, man, I am tracking with you. Man, I am dealing with what X problem, whatever it is. And man, I've tried so many different things to try to, to, try to solve this issue. And all along, all I needed to do was Jesus. All I needed to do was look to the person of Jesus Christ for my hope instead of everything else. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, if you would say, hey, hey, I'm with you. I'm right there. And can you remember me when you're praying? Because I really need help with what I'm dealing with. So then kind of three, I just want you to raise your hand. I want you to slip it up, put it up for a second, and then put it back down. I just want to know kind of who I'm praying with. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. I think that's a pretty accurate representation. God, I just thank you this morning. Father, I just thank you for each and every student in this room. I thank you even for each and every situation because I know that each and every situation of each and every one of these students is shaping them into the people that they're going to become. They're going to become such amazing people and it's going to be because, going to be because of the situation that they're in. And God, I just pray that in this moment right now, that instead of looking for answers in all these different places, God, that they can just fix their eyes on you. With your eyes head bowed and your eyes closed, I just want you to think for a minute and release the situation. And say, Jesus, I just need you. I just need you this morning. Whether it's for, for whatever it is, for, for, for a sick parent or for your grades or for the, for the situation that you're in here in school or whatever it is. Just so say, Jesus, I need you this morning. Great is your love, Lord. Great is your love that you came down for us. Great is your love that you died for us. And great is your love that we can look to you this morning and say, we are placing our hope in you and only you. God, I just thank you this morning. I thank you for having the opportunity to speak here and to and be with them. And I just pray that as they walk out of this place, so they can find hope in you. Look at me this morning. Look up here. 
Man, I've been there. For every one of you that, that raised your hand, I'm there with you right now. And so, I think we're done a little bit early. I have no idea what time it is. Um, we have a couple of minutes. So if you, if you need prayer this morning, you need somebody to talk to you for a few minutes this morning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay up here. I can't do every single one of you at the same time. I'll try to do as many as I can before we let out. But if you need somebody to talk to or prayer this morning, I'll be right up here. Feel free to come up and talk. We're done a couple of minutes early. Help us stack all of these chairs. And remember, remember, stop placing your hope and things of this world because it's not going to get you anywhere. You're going to continue to circle the drain, as we say. You're going to continue to go in circles. Hope can only be found in the person of Jesus Christ. It's been great to be back with you guys for the last two weeks. Have a great rest of the year and hopefully I'll see you guys next year sometime. Good to